Hi, it's Dwyer, nursing a cold on a Friday morning. Right, let me apologize up front for the hacking and coughing that might take place during this video. Let's talk about the upcoming fight this weekend between Vasyl Lomachenko and Jorge Linares. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Put simply, folks, we're talking about gambling. We're talking about risk taking. There are no guarantees. Play at your own risk, right? Let me just tell you my thoughts on the fight. Let's get philosophical here. Is a knockout a knockout? Is a knockout always a knockout? We just saw one of boxing's premier knockout artists, Gennady Golovkin, or Gennady Golovkin. Right, he stops Vanis Martirosian inside of six minutes, right before the end of the second round. Martirosian looks the same way I would expect someone to look if they have just been in a car crash, a bad one. <coughs> And you, the bystander, walk over to the car and open the door. And the driver falls out the car. Right? Martirosian looks like he's been in a car crash. If you're the first person in the ring, as Martirosian lays on the canvas at the end of the fight, I'm guessing you would say lines like, squeeze my hand if you can hear me. Right? Can you move your legs? There'd be a hushed tone around the fallen boxer from the fallen boxer's corner. In other words, you know those fights where at the end of a fight, <coughs> people are yelling, everyone from the fighter's entourage is up on the ropes and they're yelling and there's a lot of energy. At the end of a car crash knockout type fight. The guys in the fighter's corner aren't yelling. They're talking in hushed tones, right? Because they know their guy has just suffered a bad concussion. Now, the public must be looking at the chaos on Lomachenko's record. And they must be thinking that these chaos are like Golovkin's chaos. They must be thinking that these KOs are the kind of knockouts where you open the car door, the person just falls out on the pavement. Right now, let me say this. You know, right now on many sites online here, <coughs> the odds for this fight are simply absurd. You can get right now May the 11th, 2018. You can get Jorge Linares at a plus 650. A plus 650. Do you really believe that if these two guys fought seven and a half times, seven and a half times, that Linares would only win one of them? Let me say this politely to. Hasn't Lomachenko already lost? Orlando Salido gets inside. Orlando Salido's roughing him up. Round after round, Lomachenko has no idea, has no answers on how to get Salido off of him. Now think about it. Orlando Salido is a guy who fights everyone. Hasn't he already fought Mikey Garcia? Hasn't he fought Yorkis Gamboa? You could imagine, given the payday, <coughs> Orlando Salido would leap at the opportunity, leap at it, to fight Vasyl Lomachenko in a rematch. Why hasn't the rematch taken place? Right? Ask yourself the hard question. Think about it. If you have any doubts 
on who would win the Orlando Salido Lomachenko rematch, then how is it remotely possible <clears throat> that the casino would price this fight against future Hall of Famer three division world champion Jorge Linares in such a way that for one dollar bet on Linares, if he wins the fight, you get back six dollars and fifty cents in profit. Folks, I wouldn't expect these ridiculous odds if Lenores fought Mikey Garcia, right, an unbeaten fighter who has a hell of a lot more pro fights than Vasyl Lomachenko. <coughs> but yet I'm supposed to buy in here. Even the casino has its tongue in its cheek. Think about it. Look at the over-under. It's nine and a half rounds. So you're thinking to yourself, whoa, wait a moment. I, I thought one guy was supposed to be six and a half times better than the other guy. Right? Why the high over-under? At these odds, you're almost expecting an Anthony Joshua type over-under. Number a lot lower. The casino is telling you, hey, this fight's going to go several rounds. So then you think to yourself, okay, well, let me actually look at the over-under odds. They're giving you even money on the under nine and a half, but they're giving you less than even money, a negative 130 on the over nine and a half? <coughs> Something's wrong. If anyone expects this fight to get to the midway point of the 10th round, then neither fighter should be a 6.5 underdog, a plus 650. Neither fighter. Let me say this too. You know, it's possible, I believe this, that Lomachenko is one of the very best in the sport pound for pound. I believe this. Viewers know I picked Lomachenko over Rigundo. Right? I'm a believer in Loma. But there are times when you also realize that as talented as a young man is, he's also overrated. Right? Now, Loma <coughs> has great footwork. Folks, it's spectacular. He's ambidextrous, and he's fluid with it. Right? He can lead with his left hand. He can lead with his right hand. He's fluid with it. He's high volume. You notice fights where the other guy looks like he's in cement, can't throw punches. Loma's getting off combinations. He's a combination puncher, right? Pap, 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 pap. After a while, you start feeling sorry for his opponent. And Loma has great stamina, right? In several of his fights, you just get the feeling that the other guy runs out of stamina and is too embarrassed to continue. So... <laughs> We get knockouts of the embarrassment variety. Nicholas Walters, he's embarrassed. Corner throws in the towel. Jason Sosa, he's embarrassed. Corner throws in the towel. Right? Miguel Mariaga, he's embarrassed. Corner throws in the towel. Guillermo Rigondeau, he's embarrassed. Quits. Right now, all I can say is, please, no one should confuse that with a Golovkin-level KO. Vanis Martirosian's corner doesn't have an opportunity to think about stopping the fight. The end's too sudden. Right? Vanis doesn't have an opportunity to even get embarrassed. With Golovkin... You know, Golovkin has great stamina himself. <coughs> but with Golovkin, it's not a stamina contest. It's not an opponent being embarrassed, getting a little tired and saying, okay, that's it. You know, I'm not going to have this guy embarrass me much more. No moss. Right? You shouldn't treat Lomachenko's KOs as KOs of the Golovkin variety. That's not his kind of dominance. 
his kind of dominance is to wear the other guy down. Right? It's not to stop him early. This isn't Golovkin, where Vanis is completely lucid. Vanis is 100% in terms of stamina. Then the lights go out. Right? No. With Lomachenko, you understand. You understand that the opponent is going to hang around, even when the opponent has nothing that night. Guillermo Rigondeau. <coughs> the opponent's upright. The opponent's going to hang around. Now, let me say this about Jorge Linares, right? Linares does almost everything that Lomachenko does well. Folks, he's blessed with great footwork. He's blessed with power in both hands, right? Both hands. Loma's more ambidextrous. Loma can actually stand southpaw than stand, you know, orthodox. But understand, with Linares, he has power with both hands. You're focusing on his backhand, his power hand. Oh, this front hand can stop you. Right? Let me say this too. Not every fighter is blessed with the physical gifts that Linares has. In other words, you see some fighters and you say, oh, this guy is an overachiever. This guy's cerebral. This guy is scrappy. Think Bernard Hopkins, right? You're looking at Bernard and you say, wow, he's clever. Wow, this is a technician, right? Hopkins wasn't the kind of guy who was going to physically overwhelm you. <coughs> Linares is more like Roy Jones, Right? He had these gifts when he didn't quite know how to use them. Now he's older. Now he picks his spots. But don't be confused. Lomachenko won't be the only combination puncher in the fight. In fact, let me go one step further. In terms of power, it's not close. Linares is the much harder punching fighter much harder punching fighter. So he's going up against a guy who didn't have the power, simply did not have the power to get Orlando Salido away from him. Right? Now, you saw in the Mikey Garcia Orlando Salido fight, Salido keeps coming forward. Oh, he gets hit with some shots. Oh, he ends up on the canvas. Right? Salido starts getting desperate. Against Lomachenko, there's no desperation. He's coming in with both hands because while the hole in Linares' game is his chin, right? He knocked out cold by Salgado years ago. The hole in Lomachenko's game is his lack of power. Right? Understand. Walter, Sosa, Mariaga, Rigondeau. Guys have a chance to be embarrassed against Lomachenko. They often don't have that chance against Linares. Just like they really never have that chance against Golovkin. Right? As much as I like Loma, <coughs> he shouldn't be going off at these odds. This is a close fight. Let me say, too, that Linares has had some blood and guts fights against some pretty crafty people. Go back and look at that Kevin Mitchell fight. Right? Mitchell, very crafty. Hit harder than Lomachenko. Right? Hits harder than Lomachenko. Linares hangs in there, gets off the canvas. Blows up Mitchell's eye, stops him late in a round. Right? These fighters are close in stamina. They're not close in punching power. I think this fight is a close fight. I'm not sure who wins it. I'm not here to pretend that I do. 
but this bet makes itself. You mean to tell me I'm in a casino and someone's going to tell me that Linares is a plus 650? My next question would be, who's he fighting? Floyd Mayweather in his prime? I mean, folks, Hall of Fame fighters, future Hall of Famers, three division champions with hand speed, with power, who are still in their early 30s. I, I would understand this line. If Lomachenko was, excuse me, if Linares was in his mid-40s, okay. Father Time beats all of us eventually. But Linares is still in his early 30s. <coughs> he still has the hand speed, folks. He still has the power. He still has the footwork. And he's fighting a guy who doesn't have the punch. The bet I'm recommending and the real bet here is a swing for the fences. The bet I'm recommending is that you take the underdog. Yes, the six and a half to one underdog. Jorge Linares, right? Yes, he's six and a half to one, folks. Take the underdog to win the fight. Hedged with the over. The over. Nine and a half rounds. Right? At a minus 130. I believe for Loma to win the fight, the fight's going to have to go several rounds. While I would have preferred the over-under to be a little bit lower, <coughs> this is gambling. This is risk-taking. I'll take my chances. Right? If the fight makes it past the halfway point of the 10th round, right? Nine and a half is nine full rounds plus the half. If it makes it by the halfway point of the 10th round, then your hedge has held. But let me just say, Loma's going to have to make it there. If he couldn't keep Orlando Salido off of him, how do I know that he's going to be able to keep Jorge Linares off of him? Right, folks? Linares is a champion. L Linares has been in many championship fights against very slick, very tough opponents. What happens if Lomachenko starts fighting at an accelerated pace and Linares matches him? Let me say this too. You can look at Lomachenko's resume two ways. Now I understand the public is saying, my goodness, wasn't Nicholas Walters unbeaten? when he lost to Lomachenko. Isn't Jason Sosa a really tough hombre? By the way, my recommendation before that fight <coughs> was to take Sosa because of the odds. The odds always matter, right? The guys Lomachenko has beaten are elite fighters. Guillermo Rigondeau, one of the best defensive fighters in the game. Right? Here's the problem. Now he's fighting a different level of fighter at a different weight, right? 135. Now, heavier guys who have pedigrees. In other words, you know, Linares enters this ring having won titles in three different weight classes. Now Loma is in the deep end of the pool. And the guys in the deep end of the pool are looking at him and they're thinking, you know, he didn't have power against lighter guys like Rigondeau. Right? Didn't have power. Couldn't stop these guys in a car crash type KO. Right? This isn't the Golovkin thing where, you know, you look at the films and you're like, oh, this dude has power. You know, I, I got to worry about his power. Here... You look at the resume and you say, oh, chaos, this dude has, oh, wait a moment, let me look at the film. Then you're looking at the film and you're saying, you know what, <laughs> even if this guy's embarrassing me, even if this guy's flashing all kind of hand speed and has me looking bad on film, right, has the commentators doing the fight speaking bad about me, if he can't knock me out, What's to stop me from hanging around? Hell, I'm the one with the punch. Right? A puncher only has to be right once. 
So I believe Loma is now in the part of his career where he's going to start facing people like Jorge Linares, people like Mikey Garcia, right? Guys with punches know they always have a chance, right? Who cares about the scorecards? Let's say the fight's entering the ninth round. <coughs> Let's say Linares has only won one round. Throw the scorecards out, man. Right, he's thinking, I got 27 knockouts. 27 knockouts, and I'm fighting a guy with feathers in his glove. Right, what's going to stop guys like that from hanging around? I'm telling you, at a certain point in your career, you don't care if you get embarrassed. Right? A Horla hate Linares, who's won three titles in three different weight classes. He knows who he is. Right? He's at the point in his career where if he has a bad night, people are going to view it as a bad night. They're not going to say the guy sucks and lacks talent. We're well past that point of his career, right? The guy, the guy is proven now. So as Loma fights proven guys with bigger punches who are looking at the films of his fights and who are seeing a bunch of guys going no moss or corner saying, that's it for our guy. I'm guessing Linares has already had a conversation with his corner where he said, look, man, unless I'm on the canvas looking like Vanis Martirosian, you don't throw in the towel. Right? You want that next paycheck from me, player, you better not throw in the towel. Keep in mind, too, even the referees are getting educated. Right? Refs in Golovkin fight. See, Golovkin land a couple of hard shots, and then they're thinking to themselves, oh, man, this opponent's done. If he hits the canvas, it's a wrap, right? With Lomachenko, you see Lomachenko land a couple of shots. You're thinking, well, you know, is this opponent embarrassed? Is he... Is he going to go back to the corner and have a conversation with them and someone's going to throw in the uh, towel? Right? So, <coughs> given these odds, I believe the play makes itself. Let's not overthink this. You don't have to be Einstein. They're giving you a reigning champion who's only 32, who has 27 KOs, who has the harder punch, who has hand speed that can match Lomachenko's hand speed early. I'll agree. As the fight goes forward, the younger man might have a little bit more hand speed in the uh, mid to later rounds. But early on, Linares can match the hand speed. Linares knows Loma is not unbeatable because Loma's already lost to a man Loma has not given a rematch to. Right? Given those facts, I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. I like Linares plus 650. I'll hedge the play with the over nine and a half rounds at a minus 130. That's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. And I understand. I understand. Fighters get popular. You know they're good. Right? You know they're pound for pound in the top ten. Everyone wants to root for a winner. But understand, you could be a top 10 fighter and still be overrated. Right? You know Loma is overrated when he's fighting guys who have belts at 135, guys who have fought on the road. Folks, look at Linares' record. He's not doing an Anthony Joshua here, fighting in one location and not traveling. He's not doing, dare I say, a Floyd Mayweather here, right? Mayweather loved to fight in Las Vegas, didn't travel. No, this is the other side of boxing. This is the fighter with the passport, right? Linares has fought in big fights in the UK to the extent where people are wondering if he has dual citizenship, right? This is a Venezuelan fighter who used to fight in Japan. When he shows up, do you think this guy's going to look at the crowd and say to himself, oh man, I'm a fish out of water. I'm on the road. Come on. Come on. Get real. Right? 
Loma's going to have a very hard time with this opponent. Simply put, I can't believe this line. Right? If Jorge Linares were fighting Mikey Garcia, a fighter I believe very strongly in, and I heard that I was getting a plus 650 on Jorge Linares, that's the side of the play I'd have to be on. Of course, my hedge would be Garcia by KO. I question Loma's knockout ability. Right? I see a bunch of embarrassed guys here. I see a bunch of corners here throwing in towels. I don't see that with the Golovkins of the world. Right? I question Loma's power. I think his opposition here is top notch. Right? I like these odds. I'm taking the underdog at plus 650. I'll hedge with the over at minus 130. <coughs> Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.